Hey, it's Nathan with CrazyEyeMarketing.com. In this video, I'm gonna go over how to set up a Facebook page. Now, you need a Facebook page in order to do advertising on Facebook. Also, a Facebook page is a good way to get some organic traffic. Like, Facebook pages do tend to rank highly in search results. Also, people might find you organically if they go to Facebook and are searching around. They might find your business that way. Now, I already set up a Facebook page for my Meta Business Manager. I just came in here and I clicked on Add, and then I went ahead and I created a brand new page. And there's a link in the description below if you're unfamiliar with the Meta Business Manager, check it out as I go into more detail about creating a page in there. But once you have a page, you would come over to Facebook here, and you can go ahead and switch to your Pages account in the top right-hand corner. So you can see that I'm on my CEM Training Business Page account. So anything that I do here, I'll be doing on behalf of the SEM Training page. So if I'm liking posts, it'll look like SEM Training is liking the post. Or if I'm sharing things, then it's because SEM Training is sharing things. And so it's like your business or your page interacting on Facebook. Alternatively, if I wanted to switch over to my personal profile, I click on this account and then I'd see all my friends and family and all that other type of stuff and I could engage with their posts, you know, as myself. So just make sure that you're on the right profile before you start liking and commenting and things like that. Because there's definitely been times when I've shared personal things on my business page and business things on my personal page because I didn't switch between the two accounts. So just make sure you're on the correct account before you go and you do something. And so the next thing I wanna go ahead and do is come over to my page so I can just click on it right here. And so here's my page. And I'm gonna go through several settings that you probably wanna set up ahead of time before you start running ads or generating any sort of engagement to your page. So you do wanna make sure you have a cover photo as well as a profile photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and upload a photo. And it lets me drag to reposition if I want to, or I can just click on save changes. So I'll save the changes. And then I'm gonna upload my profile image as well. So I'll click here and choose my profile picture and upload a photo. And then I could add a description or crop the image or make it temporary if I want to. So if you're supporting some cause or something, you could make a temporary profile picture. And if you click on this option, it would let you pick a time of how long your temporary profile picture will be in place before it resets to the old one so quite similar to personal profile so anyway I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off for now and I'll go ahead and click on save. And my page is already looking significantly better. Now coming on down here, we wanna go ahead and add as much information as possible into our intro as well as our details here. So let's go ahead and do that. And then we'll come on here to edit details. And so depending on the type of business you have, you may fill out a bunch of these different details. Like if you have a physical location that has store hours and maybe you're a restaurant with a menu and you have food items, well then you wanna plug in all that information into the details section here so that way people can easily find all relevant information about your business and all this stuff is self-explanatory like if you want to add your address you click add your address and it brought me to a different area but the principle remains so add your address you click here you add your address so people can find your business or if you service the area make sure you have that area selected if you have a phone number add that email etc if you have a website you definitely want to add that so i'm going to do that because i have one for this particular example and you can add multiple websites if you want to do that but i'll go ahead and click on save and you can add additional social links as well and so you could add your instagram account here or threads if anybody uses that your twitter youtube so let me go ahead and grab my youtube and i'll plug that in real quick and and click on save. And as you can see, there's other information, diversity info, Wi-Fi network name. So maybe if you're a coffee shop and you have free Wi-Fi, you can include that information here, your prices, your services, your language, etc. And again, fill out all the information that is relevant. The more you can provide, the better. And since we're in this area already, there's also privacy and legal info. So if you have a privacy policy that you wanna go ahead and include, you could add that here. You could also add an Impressum, which I don't even know what that is, but if you have one of those, you can go ahead and link to it in this section right here. But I'm gonna to return to the main part of my page. So I'm just gonna come up here on posts and now I'm back to the main part of my page. So I can see that I've added some information here and now it's linking to my YouTube channel and also my website right here. So I'm happy with all that information. Up next, I recommend going to your settings area. There's a few settings that we wanna go ahead and adjust. So first things first, we can go ahead and set a username. And so the username would be like facebook.com slash username. So it's important to go ahead and set one of these up that is relevant to your business. Similar to how you have a username on Twitter or Instagram or YouTube, you can have one on Facebook for your business page. So we can go ahead and click on edit. And so I came up with crazy eye training as my username. I'll go ahead and click on save. Now, one thing to note about these usernames is once they're set, they're pretty much set in stone. 
So make sure you get something that you actually want. And typically, again, you want to match like across the different social media platforms. So your Facebook username, your Instagram, your Twitter, all those usernames should likely match. So that way people can easily identify that it's you and your business. Now coming over here to privacy, more than likely you wanna make sure that everything you're doing is public here. So who can see your future posts? You want that public, right? Because you want people to be able to find your business. And who can see the people pages and lists you follow? You probably want this to be public as well. Do you want search engines to be able to find your page? Yes, you probably do. Recommend similar page, yes. So maybe more people will find you through Facebook allow people and pages to message your page. So this is more of a personal preference thing. If you want people to send you messages through Facebook Messenger, then you wanna go ahead and turn this on. Now, if you're not going to actually manage and monitor your Facebook Messenger account, then you're gonna to wanna to turn this off because you're just gonna frustrate people because they're gonna send you messages expecting a reply, but then not get a reply and then you'll probably lose customers. So if you're not gonna manage your Facebook messages, definitely turn this off. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off in this particular example, so off and close, and there we go. The next category I wanna talk about is page and tagging. Again, here you wanna make sure that everyone or most everyone can post on your page or tag on your page and so on, so that way you can get as much engagement as possible. But this is also a personal preference thing, so if you don't want people to be able to like post your page or tag anything, then turn this off. But given that we're trying to drive traffic to our business, we want as much engagement as possible. Same concept over here with public posts. You wanna make sure that all this stuff is turned public. But if you have restrictions like country restrictions or age restrictions or profanity that you wanna make sure is filtered out, you can definitely go ahead and adjust these settings to suit your needs. Like sometimes some pages get more spam than others and they'll have certain keywords in the spammy posts. And so you could actually hide those posts that contain those spammy words. Or if people are cussing on your page and you don't want that, you could go ahead and activate that profanity filter. So you can find these settings under the public post area. Then there's blocking. So if you wanna block specific users or apps or pages because they're just obnoxious, you can go ahead and do that. Story settings, so allow others to share your public stories to their own story. You probably wanna turn that on for some organic traffic. Same concept with reels. So you probably want the public to be able to see the and then reaction preferences as well. So if you want to hide the number of reactions, you could go ahead and do that if you want to. So for the most part, I'm just gonna leave it all the default settings. That's a good starting point, unless you really have a need to change something. But I'm gonna come back out here to settings now. And we'll go quickly through these remaining settings. So new page experiences. What I wanna to point to right here is data sharing. So this helps with your ads and optimization of your ads. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on right here. And you can read all the details about it right here if you need more information. I just wanted to show you that this will help with your advertising efforts and you may wanna check it out and turn it on. And there's several other settings in here that you may wanna check out at another time, but this is most important for right now. Let's come back out to settings and check out linked accounts right here. So if you have a business Instagram account, which I recommend setting up, you can go ahead and connect it to your Facebook page right here. And I definitely recommend doing that so that way all this information is shared across both platforms. Coming back to settings and that's actually it for the settings. Let's come back out to our page. And let's talk about this area right here. So we have a bunch of navigation options. So posts about mentions, reviews, followers, photos, and more. And if we click more, we can see there's a ton of different options in here, which may be overwhelming and not relevant to your business. So I recommend coming to manage sections here and you can go ahead and turn off anything that is not relevant to you or your business. So just something you might wanna do. So there's less options for people to choose from and it prevents confusion. But I'm gonna go ahead and leave likes checked so that way people can see things that I'm liking through my account. And I'll leave reviews given on as well so people can see other things that I'm reviewing. Go ahead and click on save now. And now my menu is cleaned up a little bit more with a few less options for people to choose from. Coming over here, we have three dots. So we have some more options. First, first we have the option to go ahead and add to story. So if you're doing stories on Facebook, you could go ahead and do that right here. We could view our page as a different person. So we can view as like a normal person versus our admin view where we have different options and stuff. So we can see what it looks like to, you know, someone just coming across our page and make sure that it looks clean and presentable and all that stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and exit view as and come back over here. We can add an action button, which I definitely recommend doing. So we'll click this option. 
and we'll click on try it out. And as you can see, there are quite a few different options for your action button, like book now, sign up, start order, etc. And I mean, they make logical sense. So this book now would probably link over to a calendar tool. Sign up would link to a squeeze page. Start order would link over to some restaurant ordering platform and so on. And there's other options like send an email or call now or send WhatsApp message or contact us which would open up a website or contact form. And also you could go ahead and link to a group or app if you have something like that. So you wanna have a good call to action so people could take the next step with your business. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on sign up right here and click on next. And then I would add a link to my squeeze page. And now if I go through the view as option, so view as right here, I can see that I have a sign up button on my page so people could click that and it would bring them to my squeeze page where they could go ahead and request a lead magnet. Now, one strategy that I've seen several pages using is they have a call to action in their cover photo right here. So it'd be like, click the sign up button below to receive your free lead magnet and then have an arrow pointing to the sign up button. So that can be one way to draw attention to this sign up button right here on the top of your page. But I'm gonna go ahead and exit view as now and come back in here. You could edit your action button. So if you wanna change where it's going or what it's doing, you could go ahead and do that. Then there's several other different functions like search, story archive, activity log, page and tagging settings, invite friends and start tour that are pretty self-explanatory or not really important to this video. So I'm not gonna cover them. Coming over here, this is where you can go ahead and create posts for your business page. And I definitely recommend creating some posts on your page so that way there's some content for people to look at when they get on your page. Additionally, depending on what type of business you have, make sure you post on your page semi-regularly. So that way it looks like you're still open for business. Like if somebody comes to your page and you haven't posted on it in three years, then there might be question whether you're actually in business still. And so you wanna make sure you have something maybe once a month or so at the very least. Now, if you're a Facebook advertising agency, you probably need to post more regularly but any other business once a week, once every two weeks, just so there's something new on your site and people can see that you're still in business is probably good enough. And you can also look at your competition's pages and look how regularly or frequently they're posting on their page and the types of content they're posting so that we can get some ideas of what you can post. So don't shy away from some competitive analysis so you can get the most from your page. But anyway, let's go ahead and create a post here. And I recommend your first post to be a call to action type post that we can go ahead and pin to the top of your posts. So that way when people hit your page, you'll see this call to action post first and it might drive additional traffic to your website or your business or whatever it is you're trying to drive people to. So let's say, so imagine being as happy as this guy right here all because he grabbed a copy of the sales funnel book. And Facebook really likes media, so images or video, et cetera, that tends to get a lot more organic traction than just text. So you wanna make sure that you can include images or videos as often as possible. Now I'm gonna also go ahead and, and I'm also gonna add some emojis as well, and there's a couple different ways to do it. You can go ahead and click on this option right here, but it doesn't have a search feature, and I find that I waste time scrolling through and I could do it another way. So there's another website called Emoji Copy, and this is where I usually come to, and I could just search for an emoji and find it. So I got my point right here, and I could copy it. I could come back over to my post and post it in here. Get your copy. So I have a link to my website here, and Facebook automatically brought in a, an image from my website. I wanna go ahead and delete that. I wanna just do an organic image. I wanna go ahead and click on Add to Post, and I'll go ahead and upload a picture and we'll scroll on down and click on post here. And then I wanna go ahead and pin this call to action post to the top of my page. So I can click on these three dots right here and do pin post. And there we go, this post is now pinned to the top of my page. So when people come to my page, they'll see this post first before they see any other new posts. And to get the page started, I do recommend posting a few more times just to have some more content on here. Like you could link to other products or services or just memes or something like that. Whatever is relevant to your audience, you could go ahead and share right here. Also, since you're using Facebook as your page, like if you went over to Facebook and you're coming through here and we're scroll on down and we see this thing right here and maybe this is relevant to our business or our followers might be interested in it. We could come down here to the bottom and click on share. You could go ahead and write your own content right here. And so you can make it unique to you and your business. And then you could go ahead and share this to your page as well. So you could just share other people's content on your page if it makes sense to do something like that but it saves you from having to go out and make all your own content. If that seems like a burdensome task to you or something. And so that's pretty much it for setting up your Facebook business page. Just to do a quick recap, you wanna make sure that you have a cover photo. You also have a profile picture. You want all the details as possible. 
filled out in this area so that way people can get whatever information they're trying to get. You wanna go into your privacy settings to make sure everything is public so people can find you and your business. You would also wanna go ahead and connect your Instagram and WhatsApp accounts if you have those available. Then you'd wanna go ahead and clean up this menu here, give people less options and also go ahead and add one of those action buttons which drive people to take an action of some sort. Then you wanna go ahead and add at least one post that is a call to action post so people can see this right away when they come to your page and possibly take action. And then you can add some more content to your page and try to post semi-regularly so when people land on your page, they know that you're still in business. And hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, and or check out crazymarketing.com. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.